Good evening, everybody. Uh, I was on this morning and I, I brought up a lot of things I thought were important issues and I like to watch the news and see what's going on and a lot of things are changing, you know, quite rapidly. Uh, things, um, people are, you know, there's, there's things that uh, shows their, you know, the information we were getting, although very, very good, some of it was not accurate and of course, this is a very unusual situation. The experts are learning as they, as uh, time goes on, which is very, very uh, um, understandable. But um, what I really want to talk about is, uh, um, of course, everybody's hearing all about the coronavirus day in, you know, minute after minute, hour after hour, but not too, too many people are talking about lifestyle changes, which is a critical part of developing a real powerful immunity where you could be in a position where you, you won't get it, but it boils down to without exaggeration. So what I'd like to discuss tonight is, um, is what I think, I'm going to give a generalization what I think the type of diet the average American should try to switch to because the standard American diet is not a good diet if you want to you know, develop, not develop life, some of the serious degenerative lifestyle diabetes like type 2 diabetes, heart disease, arthritis, and a host of other diseases which are actually caused by our lifestyle. 85% of the ailments we get are caused by our, our lifestyle. Most of the, peop the people I've seen with chronic disease that change their lifestyle with chronic disease actually got better. So it's a really, really really, really is important. We are what we eat, and the body's a very sophisticated biological organism. It has the ability to adjust to what we're doing. And if you're going from, if you're living a good lifestyle and you go to a, a, a dietary lifestyle or a dietary habits that are bad, your body will make an adjustment, but it'll be the wrong type of adjustment because you'll be putting a burden on your body, you're putting a lot of stress on your internal organs, you're creating a lot of in, 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 uh, in endogenous toxins materials, you're probably into fermentation. And fermentation, people eat constantly, eat late at night, they're actually fermenting, and that is the ideal internal environment for, to get, uh, to pick up an infection or for your body to, a virus to be able to hijack a healthy cell and use the uh, DNA to proliferate. So, what I, uh, and then there's a lot of kind, you know, there's all kinds of uh, diets out there, and um, to one degree or another, they, you know, the people are writing books about them, or lifestyles, I mean, and there is an element of uh, the truth because there are a lot of people claiming results. But there's a common denominator. Any lifestyle where people have to say that you recovered from some kind of an ailment, that if you had diabetes and your, your, your diabetes eventually went away and you were able to come off your medication. It's because of what you leave out. That's the key. So no matter what type of a dietary lifestyle you follow, or, and the person that advocates it is telling you it's accomplishing certain things, keep in mind they have to be leaving out the, all the junk food, the processed food, to a degree. For everything you leave out, there's a reciprocal amount of improvement. In other words, if you, you know, I'm being facetious to agree, if you're smoking crack, you stop smoking crack, there's going to be a reciprocal amount of improvement. If you're smoking crack and drinking a pint of bourbon every day and you leave those two things out, there's going to be a reciprocal amount and a dramatic amount of improvement in what's going on. So that works the same way right through your dietary lifestyle. When you start leaving out the processed food, I mean, you're giving your... it's. Processed food is like a modern-day curse. I mean, it really is like a modern-day curse. You know, I'm, I can, now I can see when people are asking me questions, so if we wait to the end, I'll be able to answer the questions. I didn't realize the other times. I'm just learning at this, folks, so you've got to try to bear with me a little bit. I'm going to make some mistakes. But when you leave out the processed food, you're t t taking a tremendous burden off your body to do what it's designed to do. Your body is designed to replicate itself on a cellular level, to heal you, to, for, and to, to um, regenerate itself. 
And there's a lot of people who have, you know, degenerative disease. When you leave out the course of that disease, your body goes into an alternate response. Your body goes into a transitional phase where it will try to recover from that degenerative disease. That happens. That's a fact. I've seen it happen over and over and over. I've been doing this for close to 60 years. And I've actually had my own, like my own double-blind studies. I'm not a big fan of double-blind studies. I mean, when I hear people quoting double-blind studies, they can be manipulated so easy, it's ridiculous. It's a joke. So I'm not really a big fan of double-blind studies, or even some epidemiological studies about different populations, because they're not factoring all the different variables. So the key is the bottom line are the results you get when you leave out the processed food and you, sh you eat a clean diet. Now, as I said the last couple of times I was on, how do you determine what a, clean, what a good diet is? Well, there's three common denominators that anybody's going to get any kind of good results, uh, you know, in spite of what they're reading, where they're getting their caloric intake. Number one is clean air. You get sufficient oxygen, and you don't want to be, you know, um, breathing polluted air if you can. And we're living in a polluted environment, so clean air, so get out in the open, you know, <clears throat> Uh, I'm, not, I'm not talking specifically about not now, although I go out. I love going out in the sunshine because I don't believe staying in the house. Of course, you've got to respect other people. Wear a mask, stay away from give up. Show other people the respect they deserve. But if you're in the house, you're not getting no vitamin D in the house. And, you know, if three or four people are in that house, you're breathing devitalated air, which is not good. That's like going up in an aeroplane and they're not recycling recirculate in the air so you get clean air. Then, get out in the fresh air, respect other people, of course, get that sunshine because vitamin D is really, really important. So that's critically important. So breathe clean air. Number two, drink clean water. Water is very uh, important. It's a solvent and a transport medium. It actually dissolves the endogenous waste and removes it from your system, which is really, really important. And number three, it's not food. Number three is rest. So people that are in, in the house a lot now, they could get clean air, they could drink clean water, and they could, adequate rep, they could get adequate rest. That is very powerful for your immune system. Very, very powerful. Those three things alone. Then number four is calories. Now, this is what makes up a good diet. Where are you going to get your calories? That is critically important. You can get, you know, you can get your calories from eating salami, hot dogs, uh, you know, potato chips, you know, Hostess cupcakes. If that's what you want to do, you can get enough calories. If you get any other three requisites, you'll function, and you might feel good for a while. But it's not conducive to living a long, healthy lifestyle, and not developing degenerative disease. Now, with number four, where you're getting your calories, is very controversial. There's a lot of experts, there's a lot of doctors and nutritionists that this is controversial. And plus, it all depends upon what your agenda is in your lifestyle. If you want to be a marathon runner, a triathlete, or an ultra marathoner, you've got to be eating accordingly. And it's not the type of diet that you're going to have 18 or 20 inch arms. So you have to eat accordingly to provide uh, what I would say a clean source of enough calories so you could tra train 70, 80 miles a week and, you know, once in a while run 100 miles. Now, there's a number of ways you could do that. You could do it on junk food because junk food's a very good source of energy. It's a very good source of energy and it's a very quick source of energy. But in the long run, it's not good conducive in the long run. Now, if you want to be a weightlifter, if you want to be an Olympic-type weightlifter or a powerlifter or a bodybuilder, you have to eat accordingly. You have to get some, you know, you have to get some more quality protein. Can you do it on a vegan diet? Of course you can. When people say you can't do it, it's just not true. <clears throat> and uh, can you do it by eating animal protein? Of course you can. I have people come to me eat animal protein. That's their choice. That's not my choice. I love animals, I, this is a moral thing for me that I don't want to do it. 
And if somebody thinks that makes you uh, some kind of a sissy, well, it's sadly mistaken. That's not true. And there's a lot of people that like to enhance their position by insulting other people. That, I don't do that. To me, that's not a good way to do it. You know, try to make yourself look good by cl climbing over somebody else's reputation. To me, that's a cheap shot, and I don't really pay too much attention to, that, to those type of people. And usually, they're not too sure of what they're doing. Because if you, unless you, whatever you're doing, it's like with raw foods, I don't encourage everybody to go on a raw food diet because I know what it means and what the ramification, if you do it five or 10 years and you come off, you're in for a real surprise if you do that. So I don't encourage people to do it. So I, I do hear some people that want to do it and I tell people never take advice for somebody about living on a 100% raw food diet unless you know the person has good clinical knowledge and has been doing it themselves. 100% for at least five years. Otherwise, they're going to give you, they could give you some serious information that could get you into trouble. You don't want to change your year, mind 10 years from now. I've seen what can happen. I discourage people from doing that. So, uh, you know, the best way to, that I approach this, a lot of people come to see me. I give them uh, what I could, it's like a general type of a lifestyle, and it gives them a lot of variety, so it don't get boring. But I do, there's certain things I encourage them not to do. You know what I'm saying? So I do recommend, um, uh, you know, that they, you know, they drink, uh, try to get out in the fresh air. This is under normal conditions. Get plenty, of, do a lot of deep breathing. Uh, drink clean water. Get plenty of rest. And uh, eat a clean diet. No matter what type of diet you, you choose, leave out the processed food because the the processed food is like being a junkie. There's a psychological component to hunger. Once it gets a hold of you, that's why a lot of people think they can't change. They can. They don't realize they can. It's a little difficult in the beginning. Of course, there's an easier way to do it. I have a pretty extensive background in fasting. I've had people just fast five, five or six days on water. It breaks that addiction very, very quickly. But, you know, people should be fasting under supervision. Uh, fasting is dynamic. It's been around for thousands and thousands of years. And uh, the big thing with your diet is like Hippocrates said, you know, to do no harm. You know, you, you know medicine should be our food. It, it's true. That's, that's very, very true. If you want to look at the, the uh, understand, a better understanding of contagion, you should look at the controversy between Louis Pasteur and Antoine Beauchamp where what really happened and where some people made the wrong choice. And I've studied both sides of the coin extensively. So, you know, that's what the choice that a lot of people are making. It's not the choice I'm making. It's not for me. Absolutely. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at uh, what I think the, the um, average American, if they want to change their diet, what type of lifestyle they could go to where they have a lot of variety and they could get, you know, they could do very, very well. They could develop a much stronger immune system, the microbiome. It'll be in a very, very strong position to help you um, with your immunity and your resistance to disease of all types. So what I do suggest is that um, make sure, of course, make sure you're drinking clean water. And I recommend that you eat plenty of fruits and vegetables. I recommend a plant-based diet. And now, you could divide that up. In order to have enough energy based on your activity level, if you're a sedentary person, I mean, you can get more than enough calories just to, to uh, you know, do a, um, a little bit of extra, you know, if you're walking around, normally you have to walk up and down stairs, you have to walk a couple blocks to go to work. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about somebody that's into a lot of exercise where they, you know, where they have to run or, or they're swimming a lot. So you have to get your, the, the most efficient way to get your um, energy is either from starches or sugars. Now, a lot of people say, oh, no, don't eat a lot of fruit. The sugar's no good for you. Well, that's, that's not what I found out. My experience, I ran numerous marathons and a couple of other marathons, and I use sugar because I don't eat starch. Starch is good too, though. You want to eat a starch-based diet,
based on your activity level. There are people who recommend you just eat a starch-based diet, eat all the starch you want without factoring your activity level into it. I don't believe that. I don't think that. You won't get fat, but I see those people, they start to, they don't look, you know, like a person that does it what I believe to be the right way where you, you know, you don't have things, stuff hanging all over you. So, um, and, uh, <clears throat> so if you're eating a, a, a plant-based diet, then there are people who think you shouldn't eat grains, and that's a choice that I've chosen not to eat grains because I don't eat cooked food, but uh, some people can eat grains. If you wanted to have a salad, some steamed vegetables, with a bowl of some rice and beans, you know, you can have it like three times a week, and then if you want to incorporate, if you want to leave out animal protein, you can get more than enough protein by, uh, you know, by eating the, the grains, legumes, you can eat nuts and seeds, um, you get more than enough protein. And real, and keep in mind, when you've been eating a lot of animal protein, you go to uh, a, play, a vegan diet, a lot of people think they're protein deficient because it's that readjustment. You're actually going to, de to a detox from the nitrogenous byproducts, which are in all a in animal proteins. It's the same nitrogenous waste product that we're, our bodies are getting rid of. So if you choose to eat animal protein, and make sure you're eating it um, within the context of a plant-based diet. Um, when you eat, the more animal protein you drink, the more water you should actually be drinking. So uh, what I would recommend for a healthy level uh, to get that you get some of your your proteins and fats from grain, uh, from uh, nuts, seeds. Uh, grains, legumes, and things like that. Avocados, you know, they're, they're probably 30% monosaturated fats were very, very good, like guacamole and things like that. Sprouts, sprouts are excellent. If people want to, you know, there's a lot of people eat a raw food diet, eat a live sprout uh, type of a diet, which is very, very good because you're leaving everything out that's not good for you. And, um, and if you're eating animal protein, of course, I recommend that, it, that it, you eat clean animal protein. Grass-fed beef, organically grown chickens. You're better off eating grass-fed beef that, than eating, you know, the regular chickens. A lot of people think chickens are, be are better. No, no, not necessarily. And of course, fish, you have to be very careful with the fish because they're loaded with uh, heavy metals, basically mercury. And if you're eating fish, sardines are probably the best fish to eat because they're small, the smallest fish. So um, what I'm really saying here is that, to give you an idea, plenty of, a variety of fruits and vegetables. Uh, and, you know, plenty of vegetables, some raw and some steam. Try to eat like 60% raw if you can. And uh, some steamed vegetables. Um, try to use food combining. A lot of... Doctors and professionals say, no, we, you know, we, our food is agitated and, and utilized in, in the form of uh, chyme. You're going to, you know, absorb it um, anyway. Um, unless you're a, an elderly person, you have a weak digestion. Well, that's what I thought, too, until I started running long distance. Then I found out when I combined my food correctly, I got enough calories, I could go a lot further because I was more biological efficient. I was getting more bang for my, the buck. So, um, you know, I was able to get go further because I was not expending all that energy to digest the, to digest the food. So you don't feel it until you get out there. When you get out there at the, uh, you know, 25 mile mark or longer than that, you'll see what the difference is. Then, if you clean, what you could do when you're into a long distance, if you know what to put in your mouth while you're doing it, it's like refueling yourself on the way, so to speak here. So the fruit sugars, somebody had a question. Now I'm trying, now I can answer the, how do you combine your foods? Okay, that's, I, I can get the questions. All right, the answer to that is that uh, there are a lot of food combining charts out there. You know, you, you know uh, vegetables, vegetables go with, with uh, um, proteins, they go with starches, and they're not a good, and with the, with the fruit, there's an acid, there's a sweet, and uh, let's see, there's three different categories. The, the, the acid does not go with the sweet. 
the, new, the neutral fruit uh, that they're, um, they go either way. So get a good food combining chart. Yeah, I don't have a chart in front of me, so I don't want to con confuse you. So get a good food combining chart. It does make a difference. And, you know, you'll find you'll have better digestion too. Um, so you eat starches with vegetables, animal proteins with vegetables. In other words, if you can have rice and beans, have it with a salad and some cooked vegetables. If you're having quinoa, you can have it with peas, you can have it with vegetables. If you're going to have a piece of uh, steak, you have it with steamed vegetables and you have it with, the, uh, with a salad. And the sugars, there was another question on there. It's a question of uh, uh, fruit sugars. Well, a lot, what happens with a lot of people, they're, they're, they're under the impression that uh, if you drink fruit juice, the sugars uh, are the same as um, if you're getting processed sugar. Well, not really, but I don't recommend people drink a lot of fruit juice unless you're into some real serious endurance. So when I, was, when I did my first 50 mile run, I drank orange juice along the way. It made a tremendous difference. I learned that from Dick, I heard that from Dick Gregory, who ran across the country, ran 50 miles a day across the country. And so did Barbara Moore, drinking fruit juices and taking some vitamins. So a lot of people say you can't do it, the bottom line is, have they tried it? Have they ever lived this way at all? So I wouldn't take advice from people that have never done it. Uh, there's a question here. What do you think about taking digestive enzymes? Yes? You do not become dependent on them. Some people tell you become dependent on digestive enzymes. Not true. That is not true. The key is if you're having problems with your digestion, you're in transition, you're going through a detox, it is a good idea to take some digestive enzymes and some probiotics. But if you take digestive enzymes and you decide you don't need them anymore, to some people to say you're not going to digest your food. Well, you wasn't ready to give them up, that's why. I took digestive enzymes for years, took a couple years consistently, and I took also systemic enzymes, and then I stopped cold turkey to see what, would ha what happened. Oh, just about nothing. It just took me about three or four days to readjust. So be very careful about taking information from people that don't have the experience. Make sure when somebody's giving you advice, they have long-term experience, clinical and personal experience. Because a lot of people have head knowledge. It's so like fasting. If somebody's going to want to go on a fast, go to a fasting retreat. Why? Because fasting can be scary for people that don't do it. Now, I've fasted a long time. I know what, I did numerous long fasts, numerous, to, to find out you know, to study fasting. And I also followed some of the, the best Europeans with fasting, like Sergei Falanov and Otto Bukhacher. Some people said, oh no, they, they switched to juice fasting. Yeah, they switched because there's no risk and people can't get in trouble. So I just had a, a friend of mine fast 38 days with no trouble at all. So <clears throat> be careful about the information you're taking. Now let me see, uh, okay. Now, somebody, my, uh, my, my daughter scolded me the other day because I didn't get, I didn't answer some of the questions. I didn't realize I was getting questions, so please excuse me. I, I'm, I'm just getting the hang of this. But somebody had a question about um, vitamin D levels in African-American people and Hispanic people. That is, that's kind of a paradox. I'll answer that question now. Uh, based on the information available, um, in general, African-American people have uh, lower uh, vitamin D levels, but they have more bone mass and uh, bone density. And they, their bone mass peaks at a later age. So it's kind of a paradox. It might have something to do with your parathyroid gland, but I think there's more to it than that because um, I, look, I, I, um, I think a lot of it has to do with... Um, um, because the, of the pigment of their skin, they kind of have an advantage there with the, with the sunlight and vitamin D. But what happens, because of social economic reasons in this country, a lot of uh, you know, African-American people and Hispanic people that live in poor neighborhoods and the, the, the food stores they have in there, they just sell a lot of junk food. So it leads to uh, bad diets, which is very acid-forming, so they're going to 
They could be pulling calcium, magnesium out of the skeletal frame to neutralize that acid because it turns out the African American people, after 75, they have more they have more osteoporosis. But I, based on my experience, and it's only my experience, of course, they have a lot less hip fractures and bone problems, in spite of the fact they have, um, you know, low vitamin D levels. Now, the question is, I don't know what the question is that person had for me, is should they take the vitamin D if, they're, if their vitamin D levels are around 10? Yes, of course, take it. Take it. I take some vitamin D. And uh, f far as I know, at 90 years old, my bone density, I mean, I've had some bad accidents. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> As uh, far as I know, my bone density is very, very good, as I've shared with people. I mean, especially when I was never sick till I was 81, and then I got exposed to the mold, and that's, I am immunocompromised because of my exposure to the mold. I probably had some scar tissue in my lungs, but I'm not worried about it because my lifestyle of what I'm doing, I, it ate a hole right through my skull. You could see here, I had a hole right through there the size of a quarter, Plus, and it got into my lungs and everything. But uh, it just goes to show you, if you eat a good lifestyle, what it can do, how you can bounce back at any age, at an advanced age. So, um, should, should I fast to clear this up? Okay, what is it? Let me see, what is it that they... It depends upon what you have. If you... Uh, I don't know what you mean to fast to clear that up. Whatever you have, I mean, I would definitely look into fasting... Um, and get some, you know, you can, there's a place out called True North out in California. You can go out there and go on a supervised fast. They're, they're experts. Um, I have a great immune system, but I worry about my family during this time because they are very unhealthy, should be. Nah, if you're a very healthy person and your family's not eating a good lifestyle and nobody has the virus, I, would, uh, I wouldn't worry about that. I wouldn't worry about that. If they're sick, of course, you know, go and stay in another room or something like that. But if you're a very healthy person, following a good diet, you have no symptoms, and your family, nobody has the, the coronavirus, no. So you can't live in fear. It's not a good idea. Plus, there's supplements you can take. Some of the supplements are amazing. I don't want to go into There's some supplements nobody's even mentioned that are absolutely amazing. And of course... The Pro Silver 100 from the guy in Tampa, Florida, I can't even tell you what I've seen it do. Because somebody's going to put a hook in here and pull me out of the room. So, um, but keep in mind there's things you could do. Number one, though, is your lifestyle. That is the key. And um, makes a tremendous, tremendous difference what it does for you, even at an advanced stage. Last night, I went to bed at 10 o'clock, as I said this morning. I got up, I woke up at 20 minutes to 3. That was, the day. that was it. I was wide awake. Now, the cleaner your diet, the less, no, when you're not eating too many calories, not eating late at night, when you're sleeping at night, you're on a self-dialysis process. So it only takes a couple, it only takes 3 or 4 hours for your body to go through that process where you wake up. You just open your eyes and you're awake. So this morning I got up, me, I'm a, you know, I'm a born-again Christian, so I prayed. I was thinking about some of the things I was, wanted to say, and I'm going to do this ongoingly, the good Lord willing. If I don't leave this place tomorrow, I will keep doing this. And uh, so I got up this morning, I, I'm, you know, I, I was reading, some, I was reading some, uh, some literature by Franklin Hall that Pastor Franklin Hall was written in 1946. That is amazing. Amazing literature about fasting and about health. In fact, I'm thinking about doing something where I'm speaking directly to Christians. I don't want to insult anybody. Of course, everybody's willing to, to listen. But there's, uh, I think in some respects, the body of Christ is making a big mistake because they're not taking advantage of the full benefits that Christ gave them at the cross physically and where they have to change their lifestyle because they're getting all the same diseases as everybody else is, and it's because of their lifestyle. They're following the same lifestyle. So I'm probably going to go into that in sometime in the near future. So, uh, <clears throat> so what I did is I got up this morning, I put on my shoe, my running shoes, and I went out the door. 
And I felt, I, I felt good. I did some Qigong before I went out there. I was ready to rock and roll, so I went out there. And I live in a very, very hilly area here. There's some real huge hills. So I, I walked out. I walked, warmed up. And I like to move my arms. And I like to, you know, sing, either sing or praise or something like that. And I felt real good. And uh, so I said, I think I'm going to run back. And I ran back. I come flying over. There's a hill right up on my house. I think tomorrow if I, I do it, I'm going to call my wife and have her take a picture so people could see me coming over the hill. And, uh, but I'm just using that, not to boast, just to use that as an example, that this does work. Now, there's other things that work too, of course. But this does work if you, if you have the discipline to stick within your parameters, this does work. Plant-based diet with moderate amount of animal protein, maybe every other day, every other third day. Get some of your protein from beans, legumes, nuts, those other, you know, other, other sources of protein. If you uh, want to use chia seeds, sesame seeds, hemp seeds, they're fabulous source of protein. You can throw them in your smoothies. You don't even have to use protein powder. You want to use protein powder? Use protein powder. You don't need it, though. I don't use protein powders. There are super green foods that are dynamic. You take a teaspoon of super green food, it's like getting, you know, eating a half a bushel of vegetables. I'm, a, I'm kidding around here. I'm being facetious, but you feel it. And then, of course, I don't want to leave this out. There's the medicinal mushrooms. They are magical. Magical. Cordyceps. Gaja, Rishi, they, they are just tremendous. Tremendous. The medicinal mushrooms, they're tremendous for your immunity. I take them, I have them in the super green food, I put them in my drink. They are they're just superb. Cordyceps for energy, cordyceps for an endurance athlete, Rishi. Shiitake, mataki mushrooms, gaja. There's a whole bunch. Turkey tail. Turkey tail's another one for your immunity and energy. You can buy these combination um, medicinal mushrooms. Um, I'm going to be. I think I'm going to be working with a, a company in Arizona. The name of the company is Go Bean. He's going to make up a super green form. I'm going to. He's got fabulous products. The name of that company is Go Bean. He uses the green coffee bean. And it's got pretty ast astounding product. So, so uh, the key is what I'm saying, a plant-based diet, plenty of fruits and vegetables, moderate amount of animal protein or a vegan diet. Uh, you know, if you're endurance, if you need calories because you're active, you can get it from starches or you can get it from sugar. If you're eating a raw diet or you're eating predominantly raw, you're not going to get your, a lot of calories from uh, starches because you're supposed to cook most of them. Um, of course, there's, there are super green f foods. There's like wheatgrass and E3 live, and, which a lot of people, some people knocked over the years ago with no validity to what they were saying. I've been out on the, I've been out on uh, Klamath Lake. I've seen the harvesting. I've never seen anything wrong with it. I've used it on and off when I have it. So uh, <clears throat> remember, what you leave out is the key. It's extremely, extremely important. That's the key. Whatever you're reading, if it's clean, whatever you're reading, and you're getting enough sleep, drinking enough water, and getting enough air, whatever you're reading, if it's clean, you're going to do well. Of course, they're more refined programs, but they're not for everybody. And of course, you can also take real food and make delicious desserts. You can make delicious desserts. Delicious. I have friends of mine that make the most magnificent dessert. I don't know how to do that because I'm a, you know, I'm an old school guy. My, my, my diet is about as basic as you could be, but I'm happy with it. I like it. I just pick up some fruit and eat it. Now, sometimes I just cut up some vegetables and eat it. I love fennel. I make guacamole and I eat fennel with it. It's fabulous. I put some tomatoes in the guacamole. I put some, some, um, Lime in it, a little bit of uh, cumin, a little bit of uh, garlic powder. I got a delicious guacamole. So you can contrive a type of diet, basically, that'll suit your taste. Te uh, you know, your taste. Of course, 
Okay, what, what do I do for chronic fatigue? I, I just told you. Chronic fatigue is a condition, somehow, some way, that you have created. By using stimulants, drinking too much coffee, not getting enough rest. Stimulants, when you drink, use any kind of a stimulant, it'll give you energy in the beginning. But in the long run, for every amount of stimulants you use, there's going to be a similar amount of innovation. That means you're going to have chronic fatigue. So, in order to deal with chronic, I deal with people with chronic fatigue all the time. And 95% of the people that do it get better quickly. So, and if somebody wants to come to see me, you could, there's a number you could see, you could pick out a time. I'm only doing half hour, um, you know, appointments now over the phone because of what's going on. But chronic fatigue can be corrected. Uh, sounds a little, okay. Um, all right, any other questions? Now I know how to answer questions here. This is comical, really. Any other questions? Yeah, chronic fatigue, a absolutely. By changing your lifestyle, leaving out the processed food, maybe if, uh, you know, see if you have constipation. If, uh, usually a lot of people have constipation end up with, with uh, chronic fatigue because they're reabsorbing in the gas foam their own endogenous waste. Of course, of uh, colonics, I mean, colonics, if somebody wants to do something like that under the right circumstances, are dramatic. And the same thing with uh, colon cleansers. If somebody's got a lot of endogenous waste, they have impacted fecal material in them, they do a colon cleanse or they go see a colonic uh, a therapist or they, they want to do it on their own. You know, at the Gerson Center years ago, they used to give people coffee enemas, use castor oil packs, that does work. But I don't want to get too deep into this under these circumstances because I, you know, it's not a good idea because I don't, I'm already on a watch list, so, you know, that's okay, you know, but it's not, it's not this type of watch either. It's a real watch. Okay, so uh, let's see, what is the question? How do you get, how do you, how do you, how do you get the um, uh, heavy metals out of your system? Well, what I like is uh, fulvic or humic acid. It's very good at pulling heavy metals out of your system. Some of the uh, zeolite is good. Uh, DMSA is good. Some of the, uh, the, uh, the clays are very, very good at, uh, at pulling heavy metals out of your system. Um, that heavy metals is something you really want to, to address because over a long period of time, they can affect your mental acuity. They, you know, I think a lot of people uh, start to lose their cognitive function because of uh, heavy metals. And of course, if you're eating a lot of fish, you know, be very careful. The bigger the fish, the more they've eaten a little fish and they accumulated their heavy metals. So, to, you know, make sure if you got heavy metals, uh, you know, fulvic acid, humic acid, uh, zeolite, DMSA, and there's a whole bunch of other things too. Some of the different clays, um, off the top of my head, there's a whole bunch of things. Off the top of my head, that's what I can just grasp right now. Um, and, you know, if you do this right, you will maintain your cognitive function. Like, I've had four brain concussions. The last one, just about a year ago, I got hit in the head with a line drive at a baseball game. I was not, knocked out standing up. I didn't realize I didn't go down. And uh, it, for about three weeks, I had a hard time remembering my own name. I thought this was going to... But it came back. I did a little fast. I stayed on my diet. I breathed. I used a... An, uh, an oxygen converter, of course, um, you, can, uh, you can put an oxygen converter in your house if you want, they're inexpensive. Go to Toys R Us and you get one for about five, 500 bucks. Or if you can get into a hyperbaric chamber, hyperbaric chamber, forget it, it's fabulous. I had my own, I used to use it, plus EWOT, exercise with oxygen therapy, is very good. You get on a treadmill, bleed, breathe oxygen, you do that, it, it enhances your cognitive function, it helps a lot with everything. So there's a lot here that you could do. I'm just t hitting on everything uh, very, very quickly. Uh, yeah, okay, heavy metals, I, I touched on that. All right, folks, I think, uh, I know I jumped all over the place here. I do want to encourage people and to, uh, I think better times are coming. Uh, I'm certainly hopeful that we're going to get everybody back to work because 
I'm a little uh, concerned about uh, what's going to happen with the economy. There's a lot of people out of work. I know a lot of people, and a lot of people are really, are really, really struggling, you know? So, <clears throat> and now, now it's a good time to, you know, what, and another thing is like Ji Gong and yoga. Ji Gong and yoga and Tai Chi are powerful. The good thing about those that uh, doing Ji Gong yoga or Tai Chi, when you do it, when you're lifting weights or riding a bike or do all the things that I did, and I lifted a lot of weights when I was young. I was a competitive weightlifter, and I, you know, I did win a lot of contests. But that takes the energy from you. That doesn't build uh, Chi like. Uh, and so did long distance running. You know, a lot of long distance runners, they start to look old because of the oxidation and the free radical damage when you're really getting out there, unless you really know what you're doing with your diet. But with Qigong, yoga, and Tai Chi, you're doing the opposite. They're very slow, very slow movements where Or you can do things like See, I'm not standing up, you'll be moving around. And when you're moving and you're breathing, you're really oxygenating your system. And when you do that, that's why I did it this morning when I went out. I didn't I didn't sleep. I didn't need that sleep. I went out, felt like a million dollars. So that reach that builds your energy, that builds your chi. Your chi is the life force slows down your raging process, gives you a very strong immunity. Those exercises are the best for your immunity. There's nothing better than that type of exercise. Nothing better. Plus, when you do it, you're elongating the muscles. You're stretching them, stretching them out. When you do that, you're taking the tension off the muscles when you continually stretch out. So what are you doing? You're consuming a lot less energy. Because if you're all tight and confined, your body's using, utilizing a lot of energy there. So there's so much you could do here. Uh, hi, buddy. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, Freddie, what's your, your take on uh, psyllium seeds, hus husk, and bentonite? Yes, Sony number seven and nine, that's what that is. That's very, very, it goes through you like a rotor rooter. It just cleans, take, cleans uh, things out of you. Um, it also, it could have an effect on parasites because it kind of asphyxiate them. They don't get the oxygen, so a lot of people when they do that, when you combine it, they, they pass parasites. Okay, let's see. Okay, some processed foods like pretzels, bran, cereals, wheat bread, they, uh, they eliminate readily but have I've had, let's see, regularly, but have had, how can I help them? I really don't understand the question. I don't recommend that you eat those foods there. I don't know if I'm understanding the question. So, uh, you know, pretzels and all that processed food and, um, you know, wheat bran is a little bit different. You know, it'll, it will move through you. I recommend that you eat real food. You'll get more than enough fiber from fruits and vegetables. Fruit has digestible cellulose, vegetables is undigestible. A lot of people say, oh, the, the undigestible cellulose and vegetables are going to give you a lot of gas. You know, not if you've been doing it a while. You want everything to move through you. I remember, you know, many, many years ago when I started on a raw diet, it was just an experiment. I wasn't going to stay with it. I was 208 pounds. Could, it could deadlift 620 pounds. So I didn't, had no idea of staying with it, and I didn't know that I was going to lose 75 pounds. But I was really into, I was driven, because I wanted to experience all this for, my, for, for myself. So, um, I mean, I lost a tremendous amount of weight, but I knew I was onto something, that's why I, 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 I stuck with it. So when I first started eating fruits and vegetables, I was so bloated, I had so much gas, but that all went away. And I don't have any now. I eat a big salad, don't have anything. Because your body becomes, it makes that transition, that makes that adjustment. And the hardest adjustment is, the hardest transition adjustment is if you're eating a high protein diet to go to a vegan diet because they suffer the most. 
or vice versa, to go from a, a diet that's mostly raw to a high-protein diet, that is extremely dangerous. Don't ever let anybody convince you to do that because they don't really realize what they're doing to you. So don't ever let that happen, please. Okay, any other questions here? Uh, air purifiers for apartments in Brooklyn. Okay, I, I got, I got uh, two great purifiers in my house right now. I, I would have to run in the room and check the name. The next, tomorrow, the, tomorrow morning, tomorrow night, I'll give you the name of those air purifiers. Sorry about that. Okay, is, uh, is oatmeal good for you? Yeah, you can start with the raw oat groats, okay? Raw oat groat is the whole oat groat, and there's a, way, there's a way you could use them. They're delicious, and they're really, it's the healthiest way to do it. You buy a 22-ounce stainless steel thermos. You wash off the, raw, the oat groats, wash them off, and then you put them in the thermos. Then you bring some water to a boil. Let it sit for one minute before you put Then pour it in there and put the cap on, and you do that the night before, and leave it out on the counter. And what happens when you wake up in the morning, you got a piping hot bowl of oatmeal. Otherwise, if you, uh, then you can use the whole oat, uh, um, you know, crack the split oats, you can use them, you could cook them, you could cook the whole oat groats too, or you could buy old fashioned oatmeal, and uh, it's okay, uh, based on this, the type of diet I'm explaining to you now, once in a while you wanna have some oatmeal, you know, that's fine. Be careful what you do, though. Put a lot of fruit into it, though. People wonder why they have gas and they blame it on the fruit. So that's okay. That's all right. Uh, what's the latest? What's the latest you can eat? Okay, good question. That's, that is controlled by daylight and darkness. That is the key. Daylight and darkness, through the optic nerve in your eye, sends a, na- a message to an apostat in your brain, which is the hypothalamus gland. It controls your metabolism. The reason for that is that when it gets dark out like it is now, you know, my, and it got dark, it got dark about two hours ago, three hours ago, right? So my body is preparing me to go to sleep. Remember what I said, when you're sleeping at night, you're on dialysis. You wanna go to bed on an empty stomach, relatively empty stomach, so your body could do that job. So your body could do the job in five or six hours. But if you, if you, if it got dark at 6 o'clock and you eat at 9.30, then your metabolism, metabolism has slowed down, so you're not going to digest that food completely. So you're going to get up in the morning, you're not going to feel good. And if, if you keep doing that, you keep eating late at night, over a period of time, you start a fermentation process, which is no good. Don't do it. Fermentation is the key to disease. Now, there are people who tell you to eat late at night, it's good for you. Ridiculous. Hey, I don't know where they studied organic uh, chemistry. You must have been at the Bronx Zoo or something. That don't work that way. Your body has very specific anatomical design. It works optimally in a very specific way. And it has, it has about a 20% margin of error. But don't play the margin of error. Face the reality. And I heard some guy, some doctor said, oh, next winter, we, the virus could be, the coronavirus could be worse than it was this time. Oh, really? But well, somebody ought to tell that guy to keep quiet because it's not necessary for that information to be out there. I don't believe it. And I, I, ha, I believe, I hope, by next year, because of what happened, more people have learned how to deal with this type of a situation. Nobody's going to, nobody's going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die by my own hand. Nobody's going to convince me that I should be doing something different. And I don't forget, I've also consulted with probably 30,000 people over a period of 55 years or something like that. <clears throat> and, you know, I, I, like, I like open discussions without insulting each other. I had, uh, we had a television show, me and Peter Lisi, Each Way to Health with Dr. Fred Bishy, won the Nova Award. But we used to have a lot of people come on, doctors and controversial people. We used to have great discussions, and we were friends. No insulting anybody. You don't have to insult somebody. That's ridiculous. You're not going to learn if you insult somebody and you alienate somebody. I'm a, I'll listen to anybody. You can learn from anybody. 
But humility goes, you can't, if you're arrogant, you're not going to learn too much because you think you know it all. But if you have humility, when somebody speaks to me, I listen to them. And when somebody comes to me to see me in my office, I make sure I'm listening to every word they say. I don't want to miss anything. That's critically important. Humility goes a long, long way. There's too many arrogant people out there. And they like to hear themselves talk. You know, they like to beat their chest and, you know, what a, how, what a tough guy I am. Yeah, really? Okay. I don't know about that. I, I know some real tough guys. I knew some real tough guys growing up, you know. The tough guys were the type of guys that never had to tell you how tough they were. They never had to raise their voice. It wasn't necessary. And everybody knew who they were because the actions they were able to take when they got into some, some real trouble. So when I hear somebody blowing their own horn and they're putting other people down, it doesn't work that, you know, I'm not really impressed with that type of stuff, you know. Okay, and maybe there's a few more questions here. Uh, the best way to rid your body of candida. Okay, yes, uh, you know, if you have candida, it's very controversial about whether you should eat some fruit. Fruit does not cause candida. Okay, but if you've got a bad case of candida, stop eating fruit for two or three weeks. Um, there are a number of things that you could do. Go to, uh, um, um, stick to a diet without too much sugar in it, unless it's a complex carbohydrate, you can have some of those things. But uh, um, Herbally Grounded has a great formula, it's made for herbs called Candy Cleanse, it works very, very well. There are a number of other things out there, there's a liquid um, um, formula made from uh, Amir EPF that works well also. Amir EPF works very well, very well with that too. But uh, once you're free of it, uh, of the candida overgrowth, it's got to be an overgrowth, of course you can eat some fruit. I mean, but some people tell you not to eat any fruit, don't eat any fruit again. No, that's not true. Fruit does not cause candida. Okay, best way to be, all right. Uh, chronic. Okay, best way to rid the body of ongoing chronic inflammation, causing joint pain. Okay, lifestyle's the answer to that. Eat, it, eat the type of diet I'm recommending. And what happens, I just, I had a friend of mine had all kinds of joint pain, was drinking f uh, five cups of coffee a day, went to a vegan diet, no pain. I see a majority of the people that go to the right diet, they have joint pain, everything bothers them, they, they can't get up in the morning, they go to the right diet, they drink the right kind of water, they drink the right kind of water, eat a plant-based diet. Um, in 90% of the cases, if they don't have crippling arthritis, their pain goes away. Okay, uh, huge. Best way to heal liver. Okay, your liver, your liver is uh, probably the most important organ in your body. It performs uh, uh, about 500 different functions. And uh, with the lifestyle that people are eating today, they're really messing up their liver. I would say 60% of our population has a fatty liver. So, I mean, you could do liver flushes, you could do regular fast, but you eat a plant-based diet. Uh, if you have a liver disease, I don't want to uh, die, you know, prescribe anything for liver disease. I, I suggest a person like that call me up and I could talk to them in private. But uh, seeing plenty of people get better. Milk thistle, there's a whole bunch of things that you could take for your liver, but I don't want to prescribe anything under those circumstances. So, um, depends upon what's wrong with you, of course. All right, best water filter, the water in Jersey is done. Okay, the bo uh, um, you know, there's all different types of filters out there. I was very fortunate to be able to get a, uh, an alkaline water machine. I, I did so many alkaline water machines out there, the Kanga machine, all kinds of machines out there. But uh, I met this guy, had a, a water machine, I put it in, uh, I have it in my kitchen, I'm looking at it right now. That, that machine is fabulous. Even the acid water from that machine is tremendous to kill infections. Tremendous. I used it to help me when I had the, uh, the mold in my fart. I stuck the hose up my nose and I snored up into my nose. It hurt like the dickens, but it got rid, it worked. So, uh, reverse osmosis, some people drink distilled water. 
Uh, I drank distilled water for many years. Then I found out I don't really recommend. I mean, if you want to fast, you want to drink distilled water. But over a period of lifetime, uh, I think there's a good chance because I've seen a lot of the some of the old time natural hygienists that push the distilled water. I've seen them end up with some severe bone osteoporosis and other problems like that. Um, Is uh, I, I can't see that. Is it good supplement for bad for candida? Uh, I, I can't. Blackstrap molasses. Oh, blackstrap molasses. Blackstrap molasses is a is a tremendous source of uh, of iron and and calcium. Um, if you have a bad case of candida, there is some sugar in there. I I would. Uh, you you might be able to get away with it if you eliminate the fruit, but blackstrap molasses. I mean, you can make a coffee out of that. You take a tablespoon. Somebody that has, uh, uh, um, you know, an iron deficiency, uh, you could take a tablespoon of that and put it in a cup of hot water. It takes like Turkish coffee or something like that. I do that sometimes in the winter. It's okay. It's, it's, a, it's a good thing to do. Do you need animal protein to recover an emaciated body? Absolutely not. That is nonsense. Now, how do I know that? Because I've done it with many people. Plus, when I had the mold, I went down to 105 pounds. I wasn't supposed to recover. I was a very sick guy. I come home in a wheelchair, and they had to carry me in the house. I was emaciated. I did not eat animal protein. I did the same thing I always did. And I recovered. I'm, 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 I'm good. I'm strong. So... Um, now, don't believe that. You do not, listen, animal protein, <clears throat> in some respects, there's people that tell you it's the solution to everything. No, in the long run, in the long run, it's, it's part of the problem. But if you want to be, you know, you want to be uh, a 300-pound guy that could deadlift 1,000 pounds, Animal protein might be your answer, but you're not going to live a long life with that lifestyle. But you'll be the, some of the guys I trained with, they're the best built guys in the cemetery. They had some awesome builds. They look at Arthur Saxon, all those guys I mentioned the other day. Strongest guys, unbelievable physiques, but they all died young. So, okay, help for good sleep. For good sleep. Ah, uh, you know, this uh, val uh, valerian root, theanine, um... Bats and um, Epsom salts work very, very well. Um, uh, there's a hope, but there's a, um, the gold bean guy in Arizona has a, fat, a tremendous sleep formula. That's, that, that really, really, really works well. Um, right now, off the top of my head, I, normally I could come up with a whole bunch of things, but you know, don't, before you go to bed, make sure all the lights are off. Don't leave any lights off in your room. Don't watch television. Don't, watch, don't use your cell phone before you go to bed because this is the electromagnetic field. It's very stimulating for you. I know if I get up in the middle of the night and somebody's calling me and I go on my phone, I'm finished. I'm cooked. I, I can't go back to sleep. So, okay. All right, let's see. All right, so, you know, I'll be able to... If I'm able to get the uh, questions in advance, I'll be able to give, I'll be able to think about it and give a much more in-depth answer. So I hope to be able to do that. How do you gain muscle without taking extra protein shakes or meat? Well, uh, basically, if you're getting 10% more protein from a plant-based diet and you're getting more calories, you have to be getting enough calories to gain muscle. You just need the uh, the uh, the protein go on go on Instagram. There's a whole bunch of guys on there that are vegans, got fabulous physiques. So you just got to adjust your diet so you're getting the amount, the increase that you need to build muscle. I was in my late 60s. I was able to do three sets of 10 in the knee bends with 300 pounds. Now I used to lift weights. I wasn't getting a lot of protein. Believe me. So. Your body will adjust to that. You know what I'm saying? So I'll, be, I'll, I'll answer that question more in depth in another time. Okay, doesn't the black stop molasses help as a sleep aid with the magnesium and uh, 
and the calcium. Uh, it's possible, but don't forget there is some sugar in there. So I don't really take black sugar.